Today's video is something rather different. Recently, I saw the film Asteroid City. It's a Wes Anderson film. There were aspects of it that I liked, and aspects that I didn't like, but I'm not a film critic, so take that as you will. One of the aspects I really liked was the visuals. So when I discovered an exhibition of the props, costumes, sets and miniatures on the Strand in London, I thought I'd check it out. The film is set in the American West, it's not clear exactly where, in 1955. Wes Anderson is a director who isn't really interested in convincing you that what you're watching is actually happening. His films always have a slightly unreal look. Part of achieving that is that he always favours practical effects. So, miniatures and sets, rather than the ever-present CGI. Now, I love me some practical effects. One of my hobbies is model making, and another is theatre, so I like a bit of creative fakery. Something I was particularly keen to see, probably unsurprisingly to regular viewers, is the train. At the beginning of the film, we see a freight train of the fictional Arid Plains Railroad approaching the titular city. It carries a variety of cargoes. Among them are avocados, cars, tractors, gravel, cattle, and a nuclear missile. This is the train. As miniatures go, it's not very miniature. It's to one-eighth scale. There were also smaller scale versions for long shots, but sadly those were not on display. The locomotives are an EMD F7 and its B unit. A B unit is basically a locomotive with no cab controlled from the main locomotive that provides extra power. The F7 is a classic of the 50s. The detailing and weathering on this big miniature is absolutely superb. But for all the hard work that's gone into this train, it has very little direct bearing on the story. The story is not about trains. Given how detail-oriented Anderson is, what is the purpose of this train? Be warned, I'm about to get hardcore pretentious. Trains in film often represent a transition between worlds. For instance, think of the number of films that open with a person arriving on a train. Off the top of my head, The Third Man, Moulin Rouge, and for a few dollars more, there's probably hundreds of others. The train brings them into the world of the film. In other films, the transition between worlds can be used as a kind of breathing space. A train is a sealed environment where nothing can get in or out, or so you hope at least. It's a good way to introduce characters. Think of the opening credits of Get Carter, or the Hogwarts Express scenes in Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Actually, there is a scene like that in Asteroid City. A scene that's kind of hard to explain outside the context of the film, in which Scarlett Johansson and Jake Ryan meet on a train. Of course, a train doesn't always represent transition. Sometimes a train is just a train, to paraphrase the late Sigmund Freud. But what about this train? Well, trains are a motif throughout the film. We see several of them pass through Asteroid City, but we never see anyone get on or off them. The first train, I think, does represent a form of transition. But rather than transporting characters, it's transporting us, the audience. For all the incredible attention to detail here, this is not a super-realistic train. I find it highly unlikely, for instance, that a nuclear warhead would be transported out in the open as part of a regular consist. What it's showing us, though, is the world in which the train operates. The America of 1955, or at least the version as portrayed by Anderson. We see a nation that's prosperous and productive, embracing technology, but also a world that's paranoid about what lies outside. Which ties into the wider themes of the film, not to give too much away. Later in the film, the train serves another purpose. The characters of the film are quite isolated. They find themselves, for one reason or another, stuck in Asteroid City. It's that classic story formula. Take a bunch of people who otherwise would not be together, force them into close proximity, and see what happens. Yet the trains that pass through the town are a reminder of the existence of the outside, of the fact that these characters will someday soon have to return to their old lives, for better or for worse. So that is my entirely uneducated take on the trains in Asteroid City. Or, if I'm being honest, my excuse to make a video about a very cool model train. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, please do leave a like and consider subscribing if you think you'd like to hear more. I don't normally do stuff about films, but trains in fiction are a subject that interests me, so I may return to the concept in the not-too-distant future. We'll see. 
The exhibition is on at 180 Studios. The last day is the 30th of July. Tickets are £15 each. I would, as ever, like to thank my donors on Ko-fi and Patreon and here on YouTube for your support. You are the intricate weathering to my model train. And I will see you all again very soon. Cheerio.